Hello, and welcome to an unexpected episode of The Angry Astronaut. I did not intend to release this particular content to the general public simply because this was supposed to be a gift to my Patreon subscribers. It was supplementary information from my video about the Proxima signal and other alien techno signatures. However, the whole Proxima video was so unexpectedly popular and I the reason I didn't put all this into that video is because I simply couldn't fit all of it into a video that was less than 30 minutes long and so I didn't but I felt that it should be released to somebody so I released it to my Patreon supporters on Christmas Day. However, since that time, I've just felt with about 150,000 views, something along those lines, from my original video about the Proxima signal and other evidence, solid evidence in my opinion, that we are not alone in the universe, that I should release the rest of this information. So I asked the permission of my Patreon supporters, and they were very enthusiastic about releasing this video to everybody else, which I thought was very generous. So in any event, this is a gift pretty much from them to you. And I hope that you folks enjoy it because it contains a lot of other very compelling information from a variety of scientists and astronomers across the globe that strongly indicates that we are not alone. Information that is very seldom talked about in regular scientific periodicals or things about this subject. If we were to believe all of them, then we would believe the notion that there's no evidence whatsoever to indicate that there are civilizations other than the one that we know about on Earth. And it's simply not the case. There is quite a lot of other information that, whereas not entirely conclusive proof on its own, when put all together, and the fact that all of this defies natural explanation— Eventually, it starts adding up, and we have to ask the question, at what point does extraordinary proof become extraordinary proof? At what point is it enough? Do we have to have a flying saucer hovering over Washington, D.C. before we finally believe, or can we acknowledge at least the strong probability that there are other civilizations besides our own based on what we observe in the cosmos around us. So let's have a look at the rest of these techno signatures, and then I'm going to leave the judgment up to you, but I hope you enjoy it. Get ready for a very unusual episode of The Angry Astronaut starting right now. Hello and happy holidays from the angry astronaut. As promised on Christmas Day, well, at least as close to Christmas Day as I could manage for most of you, I am releasing a little bit of extra material from my most recent video in regards to what might be extraterrestrial techno signatures and from the less likely to the more likely sources of such things. As my video about the Proxima system started to push past 25 minutes, it became pretty obvious that I wasn't going to be able to cover everything that I wanted to, that there were other astronomical phenomena which have so far defied at least convincing natural explanation, which could be explained by artificial means that I didn't have enough time to discuss. So instead, I'm going to discuss this with all of my Patreon support and I hope that you folks enjoy it. So let's get right down to the subject. Now we may as well get started with what is probably the most controversial of subjects, and that would be the relationship of gamma ray bursts to the Alcubierre warp drive. Discovered in the 1960s when NATO and other powers were on the lookout for Soviet nuclear tests, gamma ray bursts are the most powerful source of gamma ray energy in the universe. They shine hundreds of times as bright as a typical supernova, 
and a million trillion times as bright as the gamma radiation that comes from the sun. Now, conventional astronomers believe that gamma ray bursts are associated with extremely powerful supernovas or the formation of black holes, and this could be combined with neutron stars combining to form new black holes or neutron stars falling into black holes. However, there are others who theorize something entirely different. First theorized in 1994 by Mexican physicist Miguel Alcubier, the warp drive essentially folds space in order for a spaceship to be able to exceed the speed of light, not by traveling faster than the speed of light, but rather creating an envelope of space that allows it to pass from point to point without traveling between those points, at least to put it in its simplest terms. Now, proponents of the warp drive argue that, number one, they would put out a great deal of gamma ray radiation, very similar to a gamma ray burst, but secondly, and probably more importantly, gamma ray bursts sometimes appear, appear to travel backwards in time. Since a vessel equipped with the warp drive would have the theoretical capability of traveling in time as well as space, this explains, so say the proponents of warp drive, why gamma ray bursts tend to do this, although they don't always do it, and perhaps some of them are natural and some of them are created when alien civilizations power up their warp drives. Now, to me, this is kind of a dicey techno-signature. First of all, warp drives themselves are kind of dicey. They involve things like the creation of negative energy, which we're not certain is even possible. We've never observed negative energy in the universe thus far. And at the same time, all of the paradoxes associated with traveling in time, it's just something that's a little too early for us to be calling a techno-signature, at least just yet. Now, nearly as controversial as this theory is the notion that pulsars, which have been long recognized as a natural phenomena, may not be so natural after all. In a paper put out in 2017 by Clement Fidel called Pulsar Positioning System, a quest for evidence of extraterrestrial engineering, the whole notion of us regarding pulsars as being thoroughly natural is fundamentally challenged. Vidal points out that pulsars are so damn useful as a navigational instrument that Carl Sagan actually put the location of Earth in reference to 14 different natural pulsars on the Pioneer 10 disc in order to tell alien civilizations where we could be found. Since that time, we have discovered something called a millisecond pulsar, pulsars that spin at such a precise rate that their timekeeping can be compared to that of atomic clocks and geosynchronous navigation satellites. And given how accurate they are, they could actually be used for galactic navigation down to an accuracy of 30 meters on a galactic scale. Now, that's something that incredibly useful, it's rather difficult to think of it as being a naturally occurring object. And so, in his paper, Vidal begins to critically analyze why these objects were taken off the table as being artificial in the first place. The first reason was that they consumed too much energy. Well, how can we really determine how much energy an extremely advanced civilization would have at its disposal? millions of years in advance of us? I mean, that's hardly a reason to dismiss something. Scratch one justification. The second justification is that multiple pulsars across the universe have been discovered operating at similar frequencies, and why would two different alien civilizations operate on the same frequency? Well, if the pulsar proves to be extremely useful at that frequency, and different civilizations discover the same fact, then why wouldn't they use the same frequency? Again, scratch another justification. 
The third reason that Pulsars were taken off the table as being artificial, in my opinion, is one of the stupidest reasons, and that's because the signal wasn't coming from a planet. Why would an advanced alien civilization be restricted to a planet? Why couldn't they engineer things on a stellar level, especially if they were millions of years in advance of us? It makes no sense whatsoever. Now the fourth reason makes a lot more sense. Pulsars tend to transmit on a broadband frequency rather than a narrowband frequency, and would be less useful as a result or would consume a lot more power unnecessarily. However, even this can be explained. Broadband communications or signals are much more difficult to jam or be interfered with, and if you want to use these things to navigate by, or if they're extremely important for your interstellar navigation system, then you want to make damn sure that they can't be jammed or interfered with. Now, of course, the fifth and most compelling reason as to why pulsars are natural is because we have a very good natural model for their existence. However, does that necessarily mean that every single one of them is natural? Could extraterrestrial civilizations, especially very advanced ones, not tweak pulsars or perhaps even create them by creating supernova in order to create these beacons in the first place? Vidal then goes on to establish a scale going all the way from zero that pulsars are all natural and we're just damn lucky that they're so precise to a scenario when only millisecond pulsars are modified or created by extraterrestrial civilizations, to a scenario where all pulsars are either created or modified by other civilizations. Regardless of what they may be, pulsars will always be extremely useful navigational instruments for anybody who wants to travel interstellar. As a matter of fact, even our civilization has used them for that purpose, as I've already pointed out. However, perhaps my favorite notion, which I intend to cover in a future video as well, is the idea that fast radio bursts might be artificial in origin as well. Now, the image that you're seeing at the moment is a depiction of a magnetar located within our own galaxy that produces fast radio bursts, and we've confirmed this with quite a lot of information. It's the first fast radio burst, to our knowledge anyway, that we've detected within our own galaxy, most of them having been detected in other galaxies. However, the notion that all fast radio bursts come from magnetars is a bit flawed in itself. By the way, a magnetar is an extremely active neutron star that gives off a lot of magnetic radiation. Now, this is some a phase, rather, that many astronomers think that all neutron stars may go through before they calm down, but that's just a theory. Regardless, the average fast radio burst puts out as much energy in a few milliseconds as the sun puts out in three days, and this is thousands of times more powerful than the fast radio burst that we observed in our nearby magnetar here in our galaxy. And since there's currently no natural explanation for the average fast radio burst that we detect, Dr. Abraham Loeb, who tends to put out a lot of papers on this subject, produced a paper theorizing that fast radio bursts are in fact being put out by extraterrestrial civilizations to power light sails, except light sails that use microwaves rather than light to propel them. Dr. Loeb and his colleague Dr. Lingham then calculated that the frequencies that we observe in most fast radio bursts are the most efficient for propelling light sails, those that are powered by microwaves, that is, and the emitter that one would use in order to send out such a beam would be a few thousand kilometers in diameter, granted absolutely colossal by our standards, but certainly within the abilities of a Carter level 1 or Kardashev level 2 alien civilization. And the fact that we only observe the average fast radio burst for a few milliseconds suggests that a beam is rapidly sweeping over our field of view as it propels its light sail along its journey. And this all fits within the mathematics. So it's a very, very compelling argument 
for a techno-signature of an extremely advanced civilization. And what I find so exciting about this whole concept is the notion that this type of technology, which we can at least conceive of, granted it would be extremely difficult in thousands of years in the future, but still well within our understanding of physics and technology today, this could be used to propel a light sail weighing over a million tons, and that's including its payload, to relativistic speeds. And since this may be the most efficient way to travel interstellar distances, at least with technology and physics that we understand today, this may be the way that alien civilizations across the universe travel between stars. That being the case, it would explain why we see fast radio bursts across the universe, and indeed, why there may be thousands of civilizations all capable of doing this. However, perhaps the most mysterious techno-signature that we have ever come across came out in 2019 when the Vanishing and Appearing Sources During a Century of Observations project, which involved a group of astronomers who compared a series of 70-year-old star maps to what we have today and discovered to their astonishment that a hundred stars had simply disappeared. Appeared. Now, it has long been thought that a clear techno signature involving the creation of Dyson spheres by extremely advanced civilizations would involve the disappearance of stars without the appearance of Crab Nebula or some kind of black hole or any other sort of astronomical phenomena that tends to go along with a star destroying itself. And in each case, there was no nebula to mark the destruction of the star by a nova or supernova, and no black hole, no neutron star, no white dwarf, no nothing, just a vanished star. Now, obviously, there is no natural phenomena that we know that can make a star simply disappear without a trace, without leaving any sort of remnant in its wake that can be detected even by a powerful telescope, aside from something artificial, some sort of construction project that would blot out all or most of the light from the sun in the space of just a few decades, which appears to be exactly what happened. So the team put out a report, co-authored by one Beatrice Villaroal, who is a researcher at the Nordic Institute for Theoretical Physics, and they specifically did not rule out the possible activity of extraterrestrial civilizations as a cause for some or all of these phenomena. And to say something like that, in this day and age, at least amongst a bunch of astrophysicists as opposed to a bunch of ufologists, that is practically an act of extremism. And yet, they really couldn't come up with another plausible explanation. At least not yet, although one may present itself in the future, but at the moment, it remains a very interesting mystery. So I hope that the techno signatures that I've explained in this video, combined with all the rest that I put forward in the previous video, are strong enough indications to most of you that we most definitely are not alone. Perhaps some of these things can be explained by natural causes. Perhaps most of them can, but the notion that all of them can, and we simply haven't thought of them yet, is as extraordinary as the notion of extraterrestrial civilizations themselves. As a matter of fact, I find it completely absurd. I think it's far more likely that we are not alone in the cosmos, and the evidence is all around us if we can just take the time to open our eyes and look. So until we do, stay angry about space!